Hi, this is Charles Kelly. How are you doing? Hope you're having a great day. Uh, well, here in, in the UK, uh, we have news that one in three firms, one in three large companies are planning to make redundancies and further news that redundancies are already up fivefold on, on last year with uh, employers planning job cuts you know, into the tens and thousands of, of, of people that will, will lose their jobs. Uh, in fact, um, this is, comes from a, a BBC Freedom of Information request that showed that in June, uh, 1,778 firms said they were intending to cut more than 139,000 jobs in, in England, Wales and Scotland. And in June of 2019, the same survey, show, survey showed that only 345 firms had plans to cut 24,000 jobs. So you can see that, uh, that the planned redundancies are 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 really up and, and going through the roof. Um, th this comes as the, obviously the coronavirus and the lockdown has wiped out more than a quarter of, of, of the UK total output uh, th this year. So it, it, it is really bad news. I mean, some of the companies we're talking about are large companies like Airbus, Royal Mail, uh, Swiss Port. The, this is the airport services group that you see loading up planes with food and that sort of thing. HSBC, Centrica, uh, which is a big company. Uh, that runs British Gas, although I think that comes about in that case, some of these things come about for other reasons, like because there's been a price freeze on uh, energy prices, which is good for consumers, but for companies like Centrica, it could could result in losses and and job cuts. Uh, so everything has a, has a price, doesn't it? Uh, the restaurant owner Frankie and Benny's, we've heard about that, um, and, and I think that there will be more. Some of this I think comes about because of the the coronavirus. Some of it I think comes about because companies were uh, looking at restructuring anyway and uh, this has brought it forward and it's given them a good excuse to say right we're going to cut jobs. British Airways has been a prime example they were already trying to to cut jobs and reduce staff costs by uh, changing contracts and that sort of thing and now this gives them the the, the power to their elbow the ammunition to, to carry out these the, these cuts and I think um, companies like Royal Mail obviously I mean you know, when you think about how many uh, letters are sent out now and, and how many things are now just dealt with by email and going online and, uh, you know, just, just things like electronic signatures, how that's changed the nature of things. Uh, I'm not surprised that Royal Mail are, are planning to make redundancies and, and also because the government has opened up competition. So the, the more lucrative parcel deliveries uh, have have gone out to tender with other companies and other companies have taken a lot of their profitable business away leaving them to send a letter from London to Scotland for, for 60p uh, you know doesn't, doesn't quite add up and, and also restaurants I think a lot of there were, there were a, lot, a lot of restaurants that were not doing that well maybe there were too many restaurants too many shopping malls uh, more online business so I think that that has resulted in in these cuts and also companies bringing in more technology, which now they've had to bring forward because of the, the, the crisis. So I, I, I just think that there's other things behind that, behind these, the, these headlines that probably explain the, the, the extent of, of these job cuts and why they're, they're suddenly hitting now. Then you add on the straw that breaks the camel's back, you know, the coronavirus and all the shutdowns, then it's not surprising. But these are only the big companies. What about all the small companies that uh, may maybe closing their doors. I mean, I I was at a pub recently; it was empty. You know, um, I, I mean, there were a few customers there, but you know, they, it's a nice place. They do nice food. It's a nice country style pub, nice food, nice beers and wines and that sort of thing, uh, reasonably priced. And uh, I, you know, I've never gone there and found it so empty. And you know, then I think, to, then I looked around at the stuff and I think, why didn't they 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 could have given the, the garden furniture a lick of paint during the lockdown, but it, it kind of looked a bit scruffy and dirty. Um, so, so they, but the staff were out there spraying all the tables and that sort of thing. But just, just that's just one example. And I passed by three or four other pubs that have just gone. They're, they're just not, not there anymore. And some of these pubs could have opened. Maybe it's not worth it. I mean, that pub yes, or the, the last week, is it really worth them opening at all when... That you know they've got to pull the staff there, the chefs, and and you know, pay all the bills for a few customers, and, and at a time when there should have been a lot more people in there. So you know, small shops, um, clothing retailers, 
you know, we've seen some big retailers go down and even retail park owners, landlords, get themselves into a bit of trouble with, with the amounts of, of debts and, and companies coming back and restructuring. We heard about Pizza Express restructuring uh, and, and going back to landlords and saying we want to reduce our rents or we're moving out. Um, we've seen Virgin Atlantic in America going through a type of Chapter 11 called Chapter 15 for foreign companies that want to restructure. Restructure means wipe out your debts or, or say to, to creditors, well, you know, all right, we owe you 10 million, but we can only pay you 3 million over the next 10 years. And, and what do you say? Uh, it's either that or nothing in general. And landlords in particular are getting hit because they're coming back to them and saying, companies are coming back and saying, well, we can't pay your rent, you know. Uh, this, this is what Peter Express plans to do with its hundreds of branches all over the country. So landlords will get hit. The knock-on effect of that is a pension funds. Many of those are landlords will get hit and that will affect uh, everyone that's got a, a personal pension or, or a work-based pension invested in a, a managed fund which has a mixture of shares and property and, and bonds. So it, it, it will affect uh, everybody in, in one way or another. A bit of good news last week that the property market had uh, risen to its highest level ever, the average price of a house being 241000 in the UK, uh, jumped 1.7% from June, and it's at 3.8% higher than, than last year. So so that that's a bit of good news. There was pent-up demand. There's the stamp duty holiday. There, there's new laws coming in regarding planning. So it's all looking like the government is positive about wanting to get people out there building and creating homes. And that's good news for Things like office conversions, if you can find old buildings that are, are no longer used as offices or, or won't be, then, then there's opportunities there to convert them into to, to residential. So I think out of every crisis, there always comes some form of, of opportunity and people do well in a crisis. Some people do well in recessions and depressions because they see that there's still opportunities here. We know that base rates have been held last week at 0.1%. And the governor hinted that rates will not be going that much higher for the next five years. And I thought, well, now I find out after taking out a five year fixed rate on a mortgage deal last year, when, you know, people were talking, oh, rates could go up, fix now before they go up. So who knows what can happen next? You know, it's very hard to guess the market. Having said that, a five year fix means I don't have to keep messing around every two years and then paying for more fees because that's the way the lenders get you. And that's the other thing that lenders are not passing on these rates, that their rates their mortgage rates and their mortgage deals have actually gone up slightly and since since the, the base rate went down. And they argue that, well, there's more risk about, so, so they've got to charge more. I, I, I don't quite buy it, really, um, but, th but there you go. Um, but rates are a little bit higher and mortgage deals have come down, so there's not many mortgage deals out there. So there's less deals to choose from, less lenders in the market, and, and that means we're all paying a bit more for our mortgage when we change our mortgage, it, it, it has affected things. And, and lenders are profiteering from this because base rates are so low that the cost of them getting their money has gone down uh, you know, tenfold, but they're putting their mortgage rates up. So I, I think that's a little bit unfair on, on them. They're exploiting the situation, but there again, they are banks. So what, what, what would you expect? When you go into any city in the world, the biggest buildings you see around are always banks and insurance companies. You see the, the Sun Bank, the this bank, the that bank. They're all, you're looking up and all these buildings are owned by the banks and insurance companies. And, and that's why they're there. So, so there you go. So what are you going to do if you're in a crisis? What are you going to do if your job's affected? Well, one thing you could do is start a business on the side. Uh, maybe you want to get into property. Maybe you want to, to, to get into property, but don't quite know how. There's a series of uh, webinars this week from... Uh, this, 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 this is the second night of, of the talks tonight. There was one last night uh, and there'll be two, you know, there's, there's three more this week. So if you want to join that, I'll put a link on, on the site uh, on, on this page and you can join. It's called a no money down webinar, how to get into properties with, with no money down. I'm not running it myself. It's friends of mine that run these, but they are quite useful and it's free. So thanks for listening. Uh, great to see you all and I'll, I'll uh, be back soon. And enjoy the, the sunny weather wherever you are and uh, do stay safe. Thanks a lot. Bye for now.